Hey everyone, it's Martin Umbura. Hope you're doing well. So in this series, we'll be looking at a lot of the different things that make up a pre preemptible virtual machine. We'll start off by talking about what it is and then move on to other section and we'll start to dive in deeper into this preemption process and how your VM might actually get selected for preemption. We'll then move on to a section in which you can optimize the usage of pre preemptible virtual machines and find ways in which you can capitalize on certain nuances that make preemptible machines worthwhile. And last but not least, we'll do a little video on preemptible virtual machine pricing and compare it to regular virtual machines and start to see the nuances and differences and where you can actually start to save costs. We'll also go ahead and talk about certain nuances and things to note when using PVMs that may catch you off guard. Without further ado, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about, I think, one of the most cool features that Google Compute Engine has to offer, and that is preemptible virtual machines. I know it's a mouthful, but hey, let's get into it. So let's say we're Google. We have, let's say this is our Asia region, and you have different customers all across the world. You know, let's say it's Nike, or I'm just giving an example, by the way. I'm not too sure if Nike are subscribed to them or anything. They're all using different resources that of different sizes, right? So let's say some, some are using that amount. Let's say this is a four CPU, this is 64 CPU, 32, different sizes, right? Let's say it's a 16. It reaches a point where there's always excess amount. So let's kind of shade these out. Let's say all of these are being utilized by different companies. Um, and I'm just using the example of CPUs just to kind of give you an example of how, how things may happen. And so Google will have all these data centers across the world that are being utilized to varying degrees. And so what happens after is that they're left with this excess capacity that is not being utilized. Now, from a cloud provider's point of view, you have all these resources laying around. It could be storage. In our case, it's compute that is not being utilized. You're not earning any money from it. And so it's there for a cost because remember, you have to pay for the CPUs. You have to pay for the RAM. You have to maintain it. Hey, at least let's find a way to make some money off it. So what Google does and what, and what other cloud providers do, as we'll see in a bit, what Google says to its customers is, hey, guys, listen, we have a little bit of capacity left within this data center. Um, we don't mind giving it out for a lower cost. But what we're going to go ahead and do is sacrifice high availability. All right. And so customers who are like, OK, listen, we don't need a virtual machine that needs to be up all day and all night. And we definitely do have tight budgets, the low cost. We can come and use this uh, excess resource. And so that's where the idea of the preemptible virtual machine comes in. And so simply put, preemptible virtual machines or PVMs are these simple, cheap GCE instances that could be of any size, by the way, depending on capacity of how much, obviously, capacity Google has left um, that are available for a maximum of 24 hours. And, so, and it's important to remember that within a data center, you're having um, people come in who are starting new instances. Other people are stopping new instances. And so this shape that I've kind of drawn here is dynamically changing all the time. And so Google can always guarantee, hey, listen, this spare capacity will, will change. And all we can say is we can only guarantee that your instance will be running for a maximum of 24 hours. And it could be less. And we'll, as we'll see through the, throughout this presentation that, hey, Google might preempt your instance within the first five minutes of it being up or even the first one minute of it, of it being up, depending on availability. So you've traded high availability for lower cost. And in some cases, this may be ideal for your company. And because this preemptible virtual machines can be shut down at any point in time, um, Google does not cover them. So if, so if you have important workloads running within a PVM and for some reason they get preempted, the word preempted means they get stopped or shut down, then Google's not liable for that as it's not covered within the SLA. So that may be something that's important for you as a customer to think about before going ahead and running all your workloads in PVMs. They're not covered by Google's SLA. And so the idea of a preemptible virtual machine is not new. Cloud providers like AWS and Azure have been doing this for a while now, and but they all have different names. AWS, for instance, has these spot instances where customers would bid on how, how much they're willing to pay for this extra amount of space. And obviously, uh, the space goes to the highest bidder. Um, low priority VMs in Azure are very similar to the PVM uh, model where extra capacity, like we just mentioned, is given to um, users. So now that we know what a preemptive virtual machine is, in the next section, we're going to go ahead and perform a little deep dive and look at how the preemption process actually happens and how your virtual machine may actually get selected for preemption. See you in the next one.